Good evening. I'm Siwa Billy Rose Amador. And I'm Mike Newmoon. And this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. I hope you caught up with our new time now, which is what time? It is Sundays at Mondays at eight o'clock. Yet see, he still <laughs> so, has so, it learned. Saturdays at four. <laughs> Saturdays at four p.m. <laughs> and, and Sunday and Mondays at eight p.m. There you go. So there you go. Once he learns <laughs> it, you can learn. <laughs> but it's Saturday at four, and it repeats on the La Raza Roundtable show on most Mondays at eight p.m. So make sure you tune in. Mark your calendars. Mark your cell phone and your Facebook and everything else. But today I'd like to welcome Aurora Mamea, did I say that correctly, Mamea, mm -hmm. to the show. And uh, you're very active in the Native community, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, let's see, I um, <clears throat> um, moved back out to the Bay Area in early 91. And that's from, from where? From uh, Montana, Browning, okay. Montana. Mm -hmm. um, and I had lived there for 10 years prior to that and had the opportunity to uh, grew up on the Blackfeet Reservation um, and graduate from high school there. And prior to that, our family had actually, um, my grandma was part of the Relocation Act out here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I moved back out here early 91. My mom drug me out here, drug me back out here uh, for be better opportunities out here. And uh, when I first moved out here, I knew that there was a native community that uh -huh. my family had once been connected to. Uh, I just hadn't like gotten in contact with the community yet. and being so far away from home. I was homesick for like two or three years and I prayed every day, you know, that I'll stay connected to my, my people and my our culture and stuff. And, and um, I really believe that my prayers were answered because um, after I finished uh, completing the medical assistant program in San Francisco, uh, there was a position open at the Native American Health Center and that was in 96. And so um, I got the position and I worked as a medical assistant for about five years and then moved over to the mental health department as HIV mental health outreach worker and uh, worked there another five years. Okay, let's go back a little <laughs> bit. Tell me what it was like growing up on the reservation. What do you remember about it? What stands out in your mind? Um, I guess being around other native, um, you know, the other native students there and just feeling like um, it's family and it's home, you know, and. Uh, being close to my grandma who took care of me um, at a young age um, and my aunties and uh, you know relatives up there having a lot of family was a really great feeling and a lot of uh, sense of pride in our culture yeah how were the schools uh, the schools they were pretty good the lunches were the best <laughs> <laughs> they always are huh? <laughs> yeah they had the best lunches and you still have a lot of family there yeah I do my grandma's still there aunties cousins and a lot of my relatives. Yeah. When was the last time you were back? About back three years ago. Yeah. I took my um, three-year-old there when he was eight months. Yeah. And my 13-year-old, he loves it up there. And uh, we were going to plan to go home next summer again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was waiting for the babies to grow a little older. So um, your school obviously had all Native kids in it. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. And so coming out here, that must have been really be a, a cultural shock when you yeah. came to, was it Oakland that you moved um, to or I San Francisco? I moved to Hayward. Oh, Hayward. Hayward okay. and then to San Francisco. Uh, uh -huh. I shortly after uh, moving out here met my husband. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's catch up again. You started working at the uh, Native Health Center mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Yes, in 96. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a medical assistant. And uh, yeah, just getting, um, working there. I worked with Myra, uh, uh, Myra Smith trained me. She works at Friendship House and um, had an opportunity um, to meet the whole native community. It's like once I got to know, you know, everybody and it was like, I didn't miss home anymore. I, this was my new family out here. Yeah, coming, uh, coming out here and going to powwows too. Um, I remember coming out and I guess kind of, uh, powwows are different, you know, from the reservation and, and out here. So I guess, um, not seeing, I felt like I didn't see enough uh, native dancers out there and so I wanted to see more native dancers out there and so that was my inspiration and in, um, wanting to start dance classes and stuff and help people get their regalias together and help mm -hmm. people get out there and dance and you know um, feel, you know, feel their, um, their, their pride in their culture and stuff you know and 
carry so that for, on. Uh, for the urban Indians, how would you say the powwows were different? How did they differ? Well, I noticed there seemed to be more native spectators than dancers. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I know a lot of people want to get out there and dance. Uh -huh. You know, they just don't. Hey, they just don't do it. You know. <laughs> They're shy. Yeah, shy. For Your whatever girls reasons. dance. They dance. Yeah. yeah. But, but there's a long break before. The yeah. They, they they didn't dance for a while because of situa situations and mm -hmm. you know coming here to California um, it was the house in, here in our area mm -hmm. that started to get them out there and, and dancing so it's a good thing you know Sa San, San Francisco mm -hmm. has their dance center you know yeah. Oakland has their dance center and when did you get connected with I mean how long was that dance class been open? Uh, well I first um, connected with Gilbert Blacksmith in Oakland and um, I, he says I'm a co-founder. I'm an original <laughs> co-founder along with uh, Thomas Yellowhorse Davis, John Menor, um, Gilbert, and I hope I'm not, oh, Istuyi Montez. Uh, we got together at the Intertribal Friendship House in Oakland, mm -hmm. and we just started um, coming together once a week and having dance class, and um, I think that was over a little over 10 years ago. Maybe 94 it was. Wow. No. I don't remember. I'm sorry, the exact date. And you yeah. danced jingle? Um, I started out as jingle. Um, actually, I started dancing when I was three years old. Uh, my aunt was uh, my inspiration on getting, helping me get my regala together along with my mom. And um, uh, we danced out here in the Bay Area for a while and um, participated in a lot of, um, out at uh, DQ Davis, you mm -hmm. know, um, Sundance and Lakota ceremonies and ways and stuff. Um, and then when I moved home around the age of 12, I stopped dancing. Um, and... I didn't start dancing again until I moved back out here to the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've seen mm -hmm. you as head woman dancer at several of the powwows, and I bet you that's an honor for you. But it um, it seems like you see you're a real leader in the community. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like I've thought about that a lot lately in my life too. Is um, I feel that I, I've made it. I made that choice at a young age, you know, growing up um, in an alcoholic family, you know. Um, <coughs> Um, and also, even though I always mention, even though we did, I did grow up around um, a lot of people drinking and stuff. That um, we did participate in our cultural ways too. You know, at the same time, we we managed to do that, and that's how I was exposed to that as a child. But I, growing up in that environment, I um, and on the reservation, you know, a lot of people drink up there too. I I decided, you know, that I wanted to make a difference in the community. You know, and I. I want to be a positive role model and for you know the youth and for those around me you know and um, I believe that we're all put on this earth to help each other and uplift one another um, inspire one another and um, so yeah I feel like I made that decision at a young age that that I wanted to make a difference and I want people to know you know that um, good things about natives so yeah well, that's, that's been really that's been an inspiration yeah now, you recently received the Gary Rhine Award mm -hmm. for Cultural Preservation. Tell us about that. <laughs> that was an honor. Um, and I would just like to say um, I've been really reflecting on my life lately. And I just, um, I'm at a point in my life where I just feel so very um, grateful and appreciative for um, a lot of things. I'm so thankful for where I'm at in my life. Um, that Gary Rhine Award uh, was through the Friendship House Association of American Indians. Uh, through Helen Wakazu and um, probably I guess for the work that I've done in the community I've been working with uh, the youth there for about seven years uh, doing powwow dance class and uh, teaching the protocols around powwow dance and helping the parents teaching them how to make their children's regalia and teaching the youth how to make their regalia and um, what's so neat about that watching the parents um, work on their children's regalia um, is that they're going to be able to pass that down to their kids, mm -hmm. you know, from generation to generation. You know, it's That's such right. a great thing, and and their kids are always going to look back at their grandmas and their aunties that worked on their regalia, you know, and in a way we call it um, a rites of passage, you know, mm -hmm. for the kids, the youth, and we believe that it keeps our kids off the streets, you know. That's right. It gives them some self confidence and something to be proud about. You know, I got to tell you about about Aurora too. Before I even know who she was, I remember that it was at San Francisco where you asked, you met my daughters before at a previous powwow, and I guess you guys clicked really well. And I mean, a lot of kids get click real, real well with you. you know? <laughs> a lot of the young women look up to you like that. So um, they, you asked them to come out and dance with them at the San Francisco powwow, and that was really neat. I asked my daughters to do that. And uh, you know, just so 
that right there, I, I said, well, who is she? And then, I, and then here you are on the show, and I was finding out all this stuff about you. And, and you know, it's, 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 fun, it's fun to see how our circles connect in different ways Isn't it and how we, we, you know, we extend that, that family circle. So yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad to see you and you're here on the show. So. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I wanted to mention a little also about um, back to um, the Medicine Warrior Dance Troupe um, that I first um, started out with, uh, Gilbert Blacksmith. It's, it was our dream, kind of like we talked about it, our dream to have, um, you know, a branch here of, you know, powwow dance class here, powwow dance class here, you know, all over around the Bay Area. And so it's pretty cool that we have one in Santa Clara already that you guys do on Tuesdays, you know, mm -hmm. and then we have one. Um, um, on Thursday nights, which is the Oakland Intertribal Friendship House that's been mm -hmm. going on for over 10 years. And then we have San Francisco Wednesday night. And then just recently, um, we started up one in January um, through Friendship House Association of American Indians um, in San Leandro. Yeah, so it's oh, pretty cool. That's wonderful. Yeah, and it's, it's good that there's something always going on in the community, and now there's several events on the same night, <laughs> yeah. which is good. I mean, you have choices now, yeah. but you know, at least there's something, there's some type of activity for the families yeah. everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Now, th believe it or not, there's some of our audience that have, they've never been to a powwow. What would you say are some basic etiquette things they should know about going to the powwow for the first time? Um, I would say be respectful, you know, um, of course, I feel like, I mean, everybody, wherever you go, you should always be respectful, and so when you go into the Palo Arena, um, observe, you know, um, listen, um, listen to the MC, you know, and pay attention that there's an arena director there who's kind of directing everything, and if you have any question, you can feel free to go up to the arena director or the MC and ask, and uh, I would, that's the most important thing I would say is just to, um, you know, be respectful, listen, observe. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask the MC. That's good advice. So also, um, going, I'm, I'm just going back to a story that she said about her grandma, how when they came over, you know, they, they found the Native community pretty fast. And is there, is there outreach done in, in that area? Because it's different now when, when we relocate, like when, when families come from different reservations nowadays, <laughs> and you know they just kind of come somewhere mm -hmm. and there's not really a, a forced relocation oh, right. now it's just mm -hmm. something that that's chosen and they get thrown into this urban environment and you know there's I don't know how or if there's even a push for that um, advertisement I guess for lack of better words to show hey we're here you know, mm -hmm. come over. San Francisco is great because I see all kinds of murals all over the walls you know just mm -hmm. indigenous portraits mm -hmm. of all sorts you mm -hmm. know, Santa, Santa Clara, I don't think, I've only seen one, and that's at the Education Center, but, so, I mean, What do kind you, of outreach do you yeah, do? Yeah, kind of um, outreach Well, I was thinking, um, back in the day, I know, in San Francisco, there was um, a large, and in the Bay Area, there was a large Native community I know of, and um, my grandma was mentioning how, um, when she came out here, um, Betty Cooper moved out here, too, at that time, Betty Newber Newbrest, and they were across the bay and when they heard you know there was other Blackfeets in in the bay area you know then they uh they made sure they made it across the bridge to see each other although they were scared of the bridge right <laughs> <laughs> and i always hear about the uh, they had the indian center in san francisco which was a big um, place a uh, gathering where a lot of natives can come to you know and um, touch base with other natives and find out resources and all and uh, as for today um, yes i there's a lot of outreach going on um, like one of my coworkers, she's a youth uh, youth coordinator. She just made a really nice poster that we're going to be posting up, and um, with the help of the youth coming in and doing focus groups, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they help put that flyer together, and it's really a nice flyer, and it talks about um, you know how do people know that natives are here, you know, and so it just and then it has like our contact information and stuff, and they're going to be posting those oh, and that's good. yeah, along with brochures, and then along with um, sometimes our youth go around and do uh, the the cultural presentations at school, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. I think there's a lot of outreach happening. Well, that's good. You, well, you've been involved for so long, and you're receiving an, another award <laughs> coming up next week, I believe. Yeah, is it already a week away? <laughs> I think it's a week away. <laughs> November's around the corner, yeah, so it's it KQED. Yeah. And it's uh, a Heroes Award, or tell me about that award. Yeah, the KQED Local Hero Award. Um, that's an honor as well. Um, I'm very excited about that. Um, it's great to be um, honored and acknowledged, you know, for the work that you do in the community. And um, I'm just really excited to be able to um, continue to be that positive role model, you know, for those around me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
One thing I wanted to say along with that too is uh, one of my models that I live by in my, in my life is, um, and working at the clinic too, is I always say it's the cheers theme. <laughs> 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 and um, you know, the words are like, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, oh, right? Oh. <laughs> you came, right? Yeah, so I really truly believe that in my heart. You know what I mean? That uh-huh. no matter where you go, you know, everybody wants to be uh, acknowledged. So um, that's what I teach um, my kids, you know, is mm-hmm. like wherever you go, make sure you acknowledge people, you know, mm-hmm. and um, shake their hand, you know, and. Um, just because like that simple little smile, you know, and um, mm-hmm. acknowledgement will um, make somebody happy and uplift their spirits, you know, and make them yeah, feel good. <laughs> Jeez, I'm bad. I thought she was just talking about a bar. So what motivates you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what motivates me? Um, I would say just um, people in general, you know, I love um, socializing and being around people and um, um, having fun together, you know, and um, singing together and dancing together and, uh, yeah, life, living life, you know, in a good way. Okay, then I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's your background in in powwow and things like that? From how it was before to to now, you know, the new 2010 powwows and what have you. And I remember back in the day, well, back in the day, it's just, um, powwows have that time where they, you know, are able to, the the head staff are able to honor people or they have specials and what have you. Do you feel like there's ever going to be a time where they rush those out of the arena? I mean, I don't even know if that's, that's protocol to be talked about right now, but you know, I've been, I went to, I don't know which one it was, but they did all the specials off onto the side. And oh, I wow. thought during a powwow, you know, is, is time where you, you get that time to say, Hey, you know, I care about you this much that I'm going to honor you in mm-hmm. front of all these people. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are your thoughts on, on, pushing things like like that to the side? Well, I don't, I mean, from what I've learned and what I know just here in the Bay Area, I don't make it to a lot of big powwows outside. I'm mainly just right here in the Bay Area and I believe in, um, you know, supporting our local powwows here. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, from what I've learned from a lot of the Southern style people too is that um, the protocols are very um, strong, you know, and that I know that if they have their way, it's not gonna happen, you know. (laughs) And I I don't see it happening, but although you say it happened at another powwow, Mm -hmm. um, I know it's probably like a bigger, busier powwow with um, contests and stuff, you know, and they don't have time for all that, and which is kind of sad, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, so I hope that it remains, you know, that they still make time for those um, important honorings. Yeah, because that's the time where you're able to say, that's, that's yeah. what your family talks and back on. Yeah. Oh, I remember mm-hmm. that was a powwow yeah, you yeah. too. And, and you know, that's like tradition, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah, good. That's Are your that's children th- dancing? Um, my 13-year-old danced, um, and my two-year-old, um, my three-year-old and two-year-old, they are dancing, yeah. Okay, but okay. the 13-year-old, he kind of lost interest right now. You know, he's into football and... <laughs> Maybe he'll come back. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll on. come back. <laughs> as long as he's involved in something. Yeah, yeah. That, mm-hmm. that gives him that, that team, that camaraderie, that yeah. brotherhood. Yeah, he was at the uh, Treasure Island powwow and he had fun oh, with uh, cool. his, you know, the other kids there and they're mm-hmm. throwing the ball and every time they caught the ball, they'd dance uh, power, <laughs> power dances. <That's> cool. <laughs> power well, <that> moves. <laughs> That's, cool. That's great. Now, you also sing. Mm-hmm. And where did you learn to sing? Uh, well, I used to love to sing when I was little. Yeah. <laughs> I used to sing You Light Up My Life <laughs> okay. on the phone to my auntie. Uh, I never heard that song. How's it go? Besides oh. um, also singing, like, um, there's a picture of me inside of um, Wilma Mankiller's book. Um, there's a black and white picture in there with them around the drum next to the survival school. And I'm in there by the drum singing. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Did you do a documentary? Uh, oh, there was one. It wasn't actually oh, a documentary, but um, um, Dallas Goldtooth, when he graduated from Berkeley, him and uh, I think it was Katie or Jackie Kale- Kalea and two other students, it was their graduation uh, to make a, you know, that film class to make a video. And so um, it was called As I Dance, and it's about a um, jingle dancer, um, young woman who lived in the Bay, Bay Area, the um, urban, you know, setting. Mm-hmm. and just how we go through life struggles and how um, um, dance keeps us, you know, dance keeps us grounded and dance keeps us connected and mm-hmm. that's how we make it through life, you know? Yeah. Oh, how nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice video. Wow, so you dabble with all kinds of show times. Yeah, <laughs> and then about the singing, let's see. Um, I've, um, when I worked at the clinic before in the mental health department, um, Nelson Jim was my supervisor and we learned some songs together uh, that we would sing at some conferences and stuff. 
and so just I would say from there on out um, I really have a, I've been in choir since like fourth fifth sixth oh, seventh wow. eight all the way after like high school so I love singing and and so I just you know start singing um, some of our cultural songs and stuff and then also um, when I went home to visit last time my aunt gave me a cassette or recorded of some um, you know other songs and stuff mm -hmm. so in call home to my auntie and she'll sing me another song you know yeah. share another song with me you know that I can share out here with um, in the work that I do um, at the Native American Health Center I do um, beating class on Mondays from 2 to 4 and uh, Wednesdays I help set up for the men's drum group which is from uh, what is it 12 to 2 um, set up the space the food clean up afterwards for them you know um, and then recently we started a women's shawl class on Tuesday afternoons mm -hmm. um, this is the second one I've done at the health center. Um, even when I didn't work there, I still came back and did, um, you know, work with them. Um, and then we just finished up a round of uh, youth regalia classes at the health center. So yeah, those are some of the groups that we do there. And uh, we're going to be starting up a women's uh, singing, like a backup singing group. Oh, and in addition to that, um, a couple of us have got a group together too. It was a uh, Bridget Wilson, Phyllis Wakazoo, Angelina Swimmer, and myself and Kaden Washington. Uh, we all got together and we sang some songs and we've been kind of sing them, singing them around, you know, um, some uh, powwows and events and stuff. That's been pretty oh, fun. That's great. Yeah, it's really nice to get um, a group of women together and just sing, you know. Well, would you do us the honor of singing for us? Sure. Give us a preview. Okay, so um, I'm, I'll sing a song. It's um, by Fawnwood, of course. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, yeah, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, yeah, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, oh, yeah, hey, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey, yeah, hey, hey, oh, hi, oh, hey. Yahweh, way oh, hi, yah, hey, oh, hey, 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 way oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, Yahweh, way oh, hi, yah, hey, oh, hi, yah, hey, Yahweh, way oh, hi, yah, hey, oh, hi, yah, hey, Yahweh, way oh, hi, yah, hey, oh, hi, yah, hey, oh, Yahweh. TV watching Indian girl, Yahweh, uh, I will love you even after late night, after the price is right, <laughs> even after all the fry bread's gone. Way oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, Yahweh, hey, oh, hi. Indian girl, Yahweh, uh, I will love you even after late night, after the price is right, even after all the fry bread's gone. Way oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Man, 
<laughs> so like wind in my eye. Where's this air coming from? <laughs> was, you, you have yeah. a beautiful voice. Dude. That was Thank really you. wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for being Thank here. It's been a real pleasure. Me. And congratulations on all your awards. Thank well you. deserved. It really is. I have to say thank you for all the work you've done in the community. Thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge, um, lastly, my husband, you know, for um, always being there and watching the kids, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, um, you know, being that strong backbone for me, you know. and yeah. That's important. Yeah. That's important to have someone back you up like that. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, congratulations yeah. again. Thank you. Thank you for being here. No, and thank you. Thank Laura. you. It's a pleasure. We'll see you out there on the powwow yeah. trail. And we'll see you on Saturday at 4 o'clock and again on Mondays at 8 p.m. on Native Voice TV. Good night. Indigenous soul. Indigenous soul.